Let's take a look at the state of the sim pit in 2020. There are many sim pits out there, but this one is mine. Built from scratch, customized and upgraded over the years, changing to fit ever evolving needs. It features three integrated displays and hundreds of inputs, but I'm someone who has a need to constantly improve and to make things that push the limits. And with this sim pit, you'll find features that are unique to this configuration. We'll begin with displays. And the highlight of the integrated display technology is a holographic targeted computer. And using a Pepper's Ghost hologram, operating in much the same manner to a heads up display in a car or aircraft. Contained in a bespoke box and an articulated piston arm, it can be positioned wherever needed. The targeting computer can be used as an auxiliary display, but more importantly, it can be used to see what your gunner is seeing in real time and because of the transparency, it doesn't block your own field of view. With a little practice, shifting the focus of your eyes allows you to see what's on the holographic targeting display or past it. The hologram is achieved by placing a piece of plexiglass at a 45 degree angle to an LCD screen. The plexiglass has been treated to eliminate double reflection. This gives a crisp, sharp image on the targeting computer that isn't achievable with normal glass. And the transmissive and reflective properties of the glass provide contrast to see through to the main display. As is a full-on duplication of the gunner's monitor in real time, it's not limited to Star Citizen, nor is it limited to turrets. The main display is a 329 5120 by 1440 resolution monitor. This super ultra wide configuration gives an immersive field of view and the physical size of the screen perfectly aligns with the size of the sim pit. The center heads down display can be used for communication, in-game information, stream information, anything that can be opened in a browser, and more. The left and right MFDs can also be used to control other software without needing to alt-tab. This is especially useful for managing communication software. Additionally, they can be tied into crew displays, allowing you to keep track of crew members and wingmen, especially in tense situations. These display technologies, when combined together, provide the ultimate situational awareness and the ultimate immersion factor by being situated within the cockpit itself. Further, all of the custom display elements from the targeting computer, heads down display, and MFDs can be integrated seamlessly into a single stream or recording. This allows for gameplay to be shown from multiple angles in real time. A fan controller below the main heads down display allows for temperature monitoring and fan control of the 200mm fans that provide airflow to the sim pit cabinet and the PC embedded within. To avoid the need of opening or reaching into the cabinet to power on the PC, a panel with power and reset switches as well as a disc activity light have been added to the sim pit. Resting underneath the main cabinet are the MFG crosswinds and the PC itself. The setup is designed to be modular, and nothing has to be desoldered in order to remove the PC. Let's look at all the controls sitting within the sim pit itself. The control goal was to be as immersive as possible, and to eliminate mouse and keyboard input whenever that was feasible. Therefore, integrating as many controls as possible into the sim pit itself was necessary to achieve this. This also allows for additional control options when playing flight sims. The second requirement of the controls was the ability to play any game using the sim pit, but we'll touch on that in a little bit later in this video. Right now, let's have a look at the joystick configuration. Both the Verbal Constellation Alpha and Constellation Delta have been attached to custom mounting brackets inside of the sim pit. While the Constellation Alpha remains in a standard upright configuration, the Constellation Delta has been modified by using a custom angled adapter, this allows the Constellation Delta to operate as if it was an omnidirectional throttle. Pushing the Delta to the right 
moves the ship to the right, and pushing the stick to the left moves the ship to the left. Likewise, pushing forward causes the ship to go forward, and pulling back causes the ship to go backwards. So far, this is standard for a dual stick configuration. However, because of the angle, twisting up now moves the ship up, and twisting down moves the ship down. This provides a more natural feeling for moving both up and down. A mouse tray can be moved into place when needed. By taking advantage of the mini stick on the Constellation Delta and a mouse with 12 buttons, we can integrate the best of both worlds. Analog input for movement and mouse input for aiming. The Delta's centered mini stick makes it an ideal candidate for this operation. And for those asking why a left delta instead of an alpha, this is why. This allows us to reserve the other axis inputs on the delta for other first person actions. We can utilize tilting the stick left and right to lean. The same left right action on the stick also allows us to roll when prone. And this configuration can be used to transition to EVA. While the mini stick is used to control movement, tilting the stick left and right allows us to roll in EVA with analog input. And like with the flight controls, twisting up allows us to go up, twisting down allows us to go down. This gives the best of both worlds, that is, analog input for movement and rotations, and precision aiming using a mouse. This setup is also valid for maneuvering with ground vehicles. Because movement always takes place on the left stick, regardless of it being flight, ground vehicle operations, on foot, or EVA, it makes transitioning from one to the other easy. In order to satisfy as much immersion as possible, and to go practically mouseless during flight, an integrated trackball on the right side of the pit can be used in place of a mouse. The illuminated trackball matches the color scheme of the pit. Activating the mouse clicks changes the color of the illuminated ball. The ball itself is able to be depressed, and a mode switch chooses the default click function. For games that won't act well with or support analog input, a gamepad can be combined with a mouse for a traditional control method. Additionally, a keyboard on an articulated arm can also be moved in and out of the way as needed. Head tracking is accomplished with a wireless headset and an attached wireless track IR module. This allows for the convenience of wireless head tracking and the accuracy of track IR. Head tracking is disabled when the flip trigger on the Constellation Alpha is squeezed. This ensures the screen and reticle are centered when firing. As so while the flip trigger is deployed, it's required to pull through it to reach the dual stage trigger. Undeploying the flip trigger also disables head tracking, allowing it to be out of the way when you want to force a fixed forward view. Let's take a look at the integrated buttons and switches within the cockpit. Every button, switch, knob, or dial you see is capable of generating and sending USB input to the PC. This USB input acts as a collection of joysticks that the PC and then forward to games. Additionally, many of the switches and buttons are also capable of showing internal states on the controllers, changing their lighting as they are activated and deactivated. An excellent example of this is the landing gear system. The landing gear lights react when the landing gear system is commanded, and they reflect the in-game state of the landing gear. Green indicating gear down, 
red indicating gear up. This detail helps link the in-game world with reality and allows the sim pit to show the landing gear status. Another example is the configurable autopilot panel. In its normal operating mode, it acts as a simple button board to send USB input for various buttons to the PC. However, it also has an autopilot toggle mode, which allows it to act as a toggleable autopilot for flight simulators. A programmable mode allows you to program the flight panel without sending USB input. And finally, the system can be cleared and reset back to its default state. All panels are attached magnetically and can be replaced, allowing you to change out the controls or change the aesthetics. The center joystick mount has an integrated eject lever, as well as additional controls. An overhead section also contains additional controls, along with lighting and an over-the-head camera for giving a cockpit view during recordings and streams. Due to the sheer number of control options, it would be impossible to go through them all in a video like this. But suffice to say, there's enough control options to go completely keyboard and mouseless during flight, which is exactly what I set out to do. If you're looking for more information on how it was built, or if you're looking to build a button box for yourself, check out the other videos on this channel. And you can also leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share with your friends. If you want content like this, or if you want to see gameplay that uses this sim pit, streams with multi-angle and multi-crew, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for your support.